Welcome back to the channel and welcome again to sunny Portugal. Today I've been riding the new XSR 900 GP. This is a bike I've been really, really excited about seeing and riding since it was announced end of last year. Um, for those of you of my sort of age, 40s and 50s, this styling of this machine invokes something special within us old school riders. I mean, this is harking back to the, the 80s uh, motorcycling era of those YZR 500s, those TZR 250s. Read into it what you will. There's different elements of styling in this bike from all of those eras and those motorcycles. So, uh, but what you want to know is what is it like to ride? You know it's fantastic to look at, but what's it like to ride? So, uh, Chopsy, get yourself a cup of tea and roll that intro. ridden an XSR before. I've ridden the Velocity Moto. You know Velocity Moto? If you watch my channel for any number of years you've seen I've ridden all of the XSR 900 um, and 700 Velocity Moto kits and he makes some sort of RD350, RD500 kits for the XSR. So I'm wondering how much inspiration has been taken from what he's been doing with these bikes but finally Yamaha have come out with their own version of this sort of iconic 80s themed uh, retro styling. I mean, they're not saying this looks like a YZR, they're not saying this looks like an RD500, they've taken inspiration from all the bikes of those eras and merged it and meshed it into something which, uh, in my eyes, I mean, it looks absolutely beautiful. And I've not seen as much excitement around a bike from people of my generation, sort of 40s plus, I suppose, as what this bike, the emotions and emotive uh, looks of this machine brings a warm fuzzy feeling to people of my age so setting off immediately the riding position is really really nice it's that sort of perfect blend for someone in their 40s and 50s whereby you know you've got that sporty edge i mean they've made a fair few changes to the riding position on this and basically it sits in between the XSR, which has a which has a bar you know, above the yoke, you know, a top yoke, a top bar, and obviously the R7, cool, which has uh, you know very low clip-ons below the yokes, and this sits in between those two bikes. The pegs are back slightly compared to the XSR, the normal XSR 900. The pegs are back a bit more, like the MT09. So all of the revisions that the new MT09 has had. For this year are carried onto this machine including like the gearbox modifications with the dog legs we've got extra teeth quick shifter mods you know the latest gen quick shifter where you can as you accelerate you can bang it down while your throttle's open so we test that out oh it also has of course the airbox modification so yamaha have tuned the airbox to make a to give you that sound Yamaha make musical instruments and, <laughs> and they've used that musical knowledge to tune the airbox like an instrument. Yep, I've done half a mile on it and I love it already. Absolutely love it already. This is everything, everything I ever wanted. <laughs> A bike with look, which looks like a, an 80s icon. I mean, look at the view when you're riding it. I could be riding, I could be riding my old TZR 250 again. I, I could be on Wadey's YZR 500. It looks incredible. This CP3 motor is such a gem. I think it's one of the best engines on the market today. The suspension is also upgraded from the XSR, so it's got fully adjustable suspension with high speed and low speed compression damping front and rear and a remote preload adjuster as well. So they've, you know, they've spent some money getting this bike right. Upgraded Brembo master cylinder, the brakes feel nice. They're not too grabby, but they've got a nice progressive feel to them. So the XSR 900 has the tracer 
swinging arm. So the swinging arm is 55 millimeters longer than the MT-09. So that makes this, you know, this should make this quite a stable machine. You know, the MT-09 is a wheelie hooligan with 55 millimeter longer swinging arm. It sort of tames this bike a little bit, brings a bit of stability. But we'll see, I mean, the feel from it, it feels agile, but it does feel nice and stable as well. I think high speed stability should be good on this. Hopefully. Yeah, the riding position is what I would describe as absolutely perfect, you know, for this sort of bike. This isn't a track bike. You know, it's got a nice amount of weight over the front. You've got a, you've got a sort of medium, medium weight over the front, enough to load up the front end of the bike to give you some feel from the tarmac without being too much on your wrists, without being too wristy. The foot pegs are sort of back a little bit. I'm six foot two, 20 stone, and I feel like I fit this quite nicely. Even my legs into this sort of tank cutout fit perfectly into the tank cutout, and I'm six two, you know, and I still feel very comfortable in this. I don't feel cramped. You can see the bars are quite splayed forward, you know, to give you a bit of room, and I think that's what puts a little bit of weight on the front. But I would say the perfect amount of weight on the front. Bit of comfort, but also a sporty intent, which I think exactly Describes this bike perfectly. A little bit of suspension dive when you go hard on the brakes, but you know, it's a comfortable setup. It's, it's not a race machine, but you feel like you can really chuck it around. It's got Bridgestone S23s on, so really, really decent rubber. How good does it look from the back? I love the way they've hidden the tail light so it looks like a a Grand Prix machine because you can't see the tail light and they've got like little fake vents in the back cowl and it looks really good doesn't it and that cowl is removable so you have got a pillion seat under there by the way which I don't think many people realize that that cowl unbolts and then you can have a pillion seat and it's got rear foot pegs as well so I mean whether you want to be taking your missus out on the back of this one I, I wouldn't tell them about that keep that a secret that the rear cowl comes off nice. you've also got this new indicator layout where you sort of have to push the indicator in the direction you want to go and then push it again to cancel. Once you're used to it, it's actually quite intuitive and it means you can you can do the indicator without having to look where the indicator button is, you can just you just know because it's really big. And there's also like a very small light press and it'll just flash three times for like just changing lanes and stuff. So yeah, I'm quite liking that new uh, that new switch gear. Gone is that horrible jog wheel thing which the old Yamaha's had. And you've got this proper five-way jog now with cruise control. One thing, this isn't illuminated though. This switch gear is not illuminated, which uh, would have been nice if they'd made it illuminated, wouldn't it? But I, I guess this is a this is a twelve thousand pound motorcycle. If you can spend 20, 20 plus on the GS and not have illuminated switch gear, you can't really moan at Yamaha for not putting it on a twelve grand bike, can you? Of course, Yamaha have included all of the electronics. On this bike as well, the six-axis IMU, the slide control, the brake control, whereby you know it prevents the rear wheel locking. It's got a slipper clutch, but if, if it's too much for the slipper clutch, it will electronically add power to the back to the to the bike to stop the back wheel locking up. So there's you know the electronics are really sophisticated. Look, look at the views. Look at the views. I don't know what's more eye-catching: the views of the coastline or the views of five. XSR GPs in front of me. Yeah, even over the big bumps, it's not, It's very plush, the suspension. I mean, Yamaha have upgraded the suspension on this over the, the stock XSR. And yeah, it's very plush, it's very nice. But even though I'm 20 stone, I'm, I'm jumping on this. I'm not crashing through the stroke over the bumps and stuff. Got a nice feeling on the brakes going into a corner. Lovely amount of drive out. As I say, I think the the perfect amount of power for a road bike. Yeah, coming from the man who rides a tuned H2, you know. <laughs> I know what you're saying. I'm, I'm anticipating the comments. 
I'm trying to think of what bike it reminds me of to ride and it's definitely got that big sort of sports bike feel a bit feels a bit S1000 double R because that is quite a comfortable full-on sports bike but it's a bit more comfortable than what's on the S1000 double R I'm getting that same sense of sort of neutral handling that, that you get on the S1000 double R it does feel it feels like a proper sports bike this you know it doesn't feel like a half-baked sort of attempt at a sports bike. It feels like a proper little sporty number, but with, you know, some comfort. You can feel the texture of the tarmac as well. Get good feedback from the actual road surface. Brakes are nice. Nice amount of feel from the brakes as well. An incredible sound from the engine. You know, pop banging it up and down through the quick shifter and blipper <laughs> this is great this is this is really good I mean finally finally a Yamaha that you can look back at when you walk away from it and love the looks of it the golden era of motorcycling brought back for 2024 I've got a lot of time for that Well, here it is, the XSR 900 GP, a bike I've been uh, really, really excited about trying. And look where we are. This is uh, Portugal, just slightly north of uh, Lisbon. So the first thing which obviously grabs you with this bike is this colour scheme. I mean, for me, this is, this is iconic Yamaha Marlborough colours. Let's call it Marlborough colours. There's no cigarette advertising these days of course but this was the Marlborough colours so the paint finish on here is the proper Marlborough paint and it, it won't come out in video but the colour of that is just absolutely incredible and then you've got these yellow sort of number boards on it as well it's uh, it looks absolutely fantastic these TZR 250 I used to have a TZR 250 back in the day and it had these sort of little bolt-on winglets very much like this I don't think they're exactly the same but they're very much like these little winglets on the front of the cow. This bike is the accessorized one. So this has the belly pan. The belly pan, I think, is an extra 600 pound because this bike does come in a, a black and gray as well. You may never see one on the road, but they do make this in a black and gray and you get a matching, matching belly pan. A lot of people said, oh, panel gaps, but the, this belly pan's not fitted to the top cow. So, you know, so that, yeah, it looks better, I think, with the belly pan. This one has the full Akropovic system as well. So as I say, this is the accessorized one. This also has the metal sort of tail tidy. The rear cowl also looks fantastic in that same Marlborough red. I love the little vents here, but the actual tail light is underneath at the bottom here. But it's, you know, look, little vent, look at this little vent here. Look at this little sort of fake vent here. What does impress is like the fit and finish, like the top, the top yoke finish here. You know really really nicely finished and all of this screen that lovely little bolts like this here all this is really nicely finished the paint works that pearlescent white paintwork you know that the fairings stay here you know like the 80s bikes all had these sort of fairing stays like this here as well so really authentic of course no Yamaha 80s rep would be complete without a silver frame. Silver frame and also silver swinging arm and matching Marlboro coloured wheels. Oh, I think it looks absolutely amazing this bike. I, I think Yamaha's going to sell a shit ton of these. The noise from the from the airbox is so lovely. They're on to an absolute winner here, Yamaha. Let's put the cruise on, set. Can you change gear with the cruise on? No. You can't change with the cruise on. I love the way you can just slide across in the seat and <laughs> you've got that full-on sports bike experience you ride this like a sports bike 
you know, your body position, the way you move around on it. It's like a sports bike, but a comfortable sports bike. It feels sporty, but with some comfort, you know? You just feel like it will lay down, keep laying down. Like I say, s 1000 double is what it reminds me of. Let's get past the death machine. The rolling death machine. Loads to go. The front end feels really, really nice. It's got a lovely, a lovely feel from the front end, from the from the feedback get from the tarmac to the way it turns in, the sort of confidence as it goes over. The gearing you know, seems perfect. Quick shifter blippers, perfect. A, I'm not feeling any niggles at all with this. And it's, it's easy to find neutral. There's nothing which is standing out. The vibrations. It's a tiny little bit of buzz through the bars, you know, but it's, it's, it's nothing to worry about at all. I mean, everyone, I think anyone who's ever ridden a bike with the CP3 motor in, you know how good it is. You know, it's such a, such a good bike. I mean, this, and hopefully the R9 will also be coming next year. So, I mean, if this is this good, how good is the R9 going to be? One thing I do find, if I wanted to have a, a little bit of a niggle about some of the Yamaha models is the clutches can be a little tiny bit on the snatchy side and like right at quite <laughs> bloody hell, maybe jump and quite far out on the sort of lever travel you know as a little, little that would be one that it makes it not say awkward but you can sort of notice it when you're filtering and you you're on and off the clutch that'd be a slight a slight little niggle Look at this, uh, look at that view. Look at them bikes. How good do they look? Like lining up on the grid, isn't it? Love it. Yeah. It's brilliant. I want one. <laughs> <laughs> so look at the navigation we've got on here as well. Integrated navigation. And that, like I can say, Yamaha used to be the subscription service with the Garmin, but now that's all included. And it's got a really sophisticated Yamaha My Ride app now, I think it's called. You know, and you set all that up through the app, but you didn't, I didn't set this up, so you obviously don't need to keep your phone connected. Once it's downloaded to the bike, your route, it, it's there, you know. I mean, how good is that? So here we go, this is it. We are on circuit at Estoril. Look over the shoulder, no one coming. We're only doing, uh, <laughs> we're just riding to a couple of stops and then, uh, that's it basically. This is just photos and guffage. I mean, how cool would it be to do a couple of proper sessions here? This would be another circuit off my circuit list. Oh, it's a brilliant circuit, isn't it? Oh, why can't we have a few full laps around here? Here's the black and grey. Look, this is black and grey with the matching belly pan. Looks nice actually, the black and grey, doesn't it? That's like the prototype one they had at Goodwood last year. It's difficult, isn't it? Because it, it, probably everyone's going to go for the Marlborough colour. But maybe the maybe the black and grey would be the one you want. Yeah, this is the fully accessorised one, that, the system back end and the pads as well, tank tank, tank pads. I want to hear this one, actually. Can I fire this one up? Let's have, have a listen to them with the exhaust on. We've still got a cat in this. Doesn't sound too much different actually. Doesn't sound that different. While we're waiting around for these photos and stuff, if you push a short press on the little home button there and go into the settings with the jog wheel here, vehicle function, you've got, if you go into the YRC settings, YRC modes, You've got all of the modes and you've got, you know, full full control over everything, brake control, quick shifter, must be up and down there, two lots of quick shifters, lift control, slide control, traction control and power. And all these are preset, but you've got two custom ones where you can go in and mess about with it, get, get it where you want it to do. But if you want to turn off like the lift control or whatever, go into the stability control settings and this is where you can select on and off what you want, lift control off, 
you know, you can go through basically turn the slide control off so you can adjust all that independently. And if you turn the bike on and off, you know, all of that stays off. So that's uh, the photos and video all done for the day and it's quarter past four. Now we've got an hour and 45 minute ride, which will take us back to the hotel. But apparently we're gonna get some twisty roads now. We've not really had much in the way of decent roads. Now, and even though we've done a lot of faffing up and down, it, town work, it's, you know, it's pretty comfortable, really. I find the seat is quite narrow, so if there's any, any criticisms around the comfort on the bike, with my wide ass, I find the seat not particularly wide. So you're sort of sat on the edges of the seat a little bit. But you can see the chap in front, I mean, his, his ass is nowhere near the width of mine, and you can see his cheeks are outside of the seat. So I think seat comfort is quite well padded. They've added extra padding to the seat, extra Paddington, but it's still relatively narrow. But I mean, by the time you've done an hour, you want to get off anyway, because your wrists are starting to free a little bit after an hour. So, I mean, that's fine, isn't it? That's the sort of bike it is. It's not a touring machine, you know, it's a, it's a sporty number. So that's to be expected. What is great about it, the composure, I think, is what's sort of most impressive. It's a, you know, it's a long wheelbase, so it's very stable, but it's very composed. And you, you lean it into a corner and you, you, know, you want a little bit more out of it no problem you know you want to you need to trail break into the corner no problem the suspension is it's plush you know it's not it's not really hard it's a plush ride but it has got enough support as well the old mt07 was very soft so you had that a lot of flex in the chassis they've actually and you know, they've added plating to this to the frame on this now They're around the headstock area to firm it all up and you've got lovely support there's none of that wallowing there's no wallowness to the ride you know wallowness is that a word i don't think so but it doesn't wallow you know the suspension's doing the flex the chassis is firm the brakes are sharp enough that you've got confidence to push on as well and there's nothing more confident sapping than having brakes where you've you feel like they're a bit wooden you know you've not got the power there these are nice and progressive they're not like really grabby but they are you have got that progressive power feel you know you, you can rely on the brakes that you're going to be able to stop that's the difference this smoky old thing about it is you ride it like a full-on sports bike even though the clip-ons are above the bars you ride it like a full-on sports bike you shift your weight around in the seat you hang your knee out oh i can't risk it <laughs> i can't risk it i'd like my van in the beige please here in aid beige if i may so we've arrived back at the hotel. It's been a long day. We set off about nine o'clock this morning. I think it's about 20 past six now. So we've spent a long time in the saddle today. It's been fantastic. The roads in Portugal have been a bit busy. They're never the best roads in Portugal, but it was good enough to really test out this bike. And uh, I am thoroughly impressed. My ass is a little bit sore from the seat, but I think that's just because of the amount of time I've spent in the saddle today. My wrists are a little bit saw as well because you know it is even though it's a comfortable sports bike it's still a sports bike but i mean it's it's really impressed i can't think of anything else i'd change on this bike even niggles wise i mean originally i thought maybe the clutch was a little bit snatchy but i've even got used to that and thought that that's a non-issue as well so i like to try and point out some things which i think are they're just niggles but there's nothing i can't even think of any niggles on this you've got GPS navigation, which you no longer have to pay for. It's no longer subscription, it's just included. All of that is on the bike. Quick, quick shift to blipper, navigation, full electronics where you can turn things off individually. It can do everything, this bike. And, and the looks, don't even talk about the looks. You know, the looks, it looks absolutely incredible. Yeah, I know people are gonna say, well, why has it not got the belly pan on? You know, it should have the belly pan. Yeah, I could probably agree. Maybe it should have the belly pan on a standard, but 13 grand with the belly pan, you know, the price of bikes these days, it's, it's a reasonable amount of money. The only thing I can think could be an issue with this bike, it could be a victim of its own success. A bit like the Audi TT when it first came out. A brilliant bike, everyone bought one. And <laughs> then everyone had one. 
These are actually limited numbers. I think they're sold out for the next three months. So if you've ordered one, you're going to get one, but then there's none available for three months' time. I think what Yamaha are going to have to do is every year change up the paint scheme because otherwise there's going to be like too many of the Marlboros on the road. So this, if you want one of these, this could be the only year where you can get the Marlboro because I can see them coming with, uh, you know, I don't know, one of the other classic schemes, the Kenny Roberts or something like that for next year. So uh, I don't know that, that's just me guessing, but I can see it being changed up on a yearly basis. So if you want the Marlboro XSR, you better get your order in this year. Thanks guys, see you next time.